All right, new chapter, depreciation. Uh, there are three parts to this, part one, part two, and part three. This video is only part one of depreciation, a short introduction. Now, depreciation is very important. You have to master this chapter. Uh, it appears in every single O-level exam, okay? So you have to master this chapter. Now, uh, lesson ob objectives, we have three objectives for this video. Uh, first of all, we're going to introduce to you what is depreciation. Number two, causes of depreciation. And number three, the different methods to calculate depreciation. Objective one, what is depreciation? Now, uh, this is your textbook's definition. Textbook says that ah, depreciation is the spread of the cost of asset over its expected useful life. And then, the internet's definition. Internet says that uh, in depreciation is the assigning or allocating of a plant's uh, asset's cost to expense over the accounting period that the asset is likely to be used. Are you confused? Don't worry. Let me give you a very simple example of what is depreciation to demonstrate to you what is depreciation. So, iPhone, I believe most of you should be using Samsung or, I mean, should be using a smartphone, either Samsung, Apple, or whatever it is. Let's just say iPhone. Okay, you bought your iPhone in year 2010 for $1,000. Now, four years down the road, in 2014, you decided to sell your iPhone away. The question is, do you think your iPhone is still worth $1,000? You bought it four years ago at $1,000. Four years later, you want to sell it at $1,000 as well. Do you think it can still fetch $1,000? Obviously, no, right? So probably four years later, your iPhone is only worth $400. This is what we mean by depreciation. Do you see from $1,000 to $400? So what is depreciation? Depreciation, as you see from the iPhone example, it is something bad. From $1,000, it dropped to $400. It is something bad. It's an ex it, it is an expense. Depreciation is an expense. And what depreciation does is that it reduces the value of an asset over time. Do you see your iPhone used to be $1,000? But no, 2014, four years down the road, it is only worth $400. Do you see the value of your iPhone? From $1,000, it reduces to $400. Okay, like, all right. Oops, yeah, it reduces to $400. All right, so now you understand what is depreciation. Let us go to objective two then why do we need to depreciate our assets? There are different causes for depreciation, uh, but basically I pick out the two simplest uh, one for you, simplest to remember, easiest to understand. These are the two causes, number one, wear and tear. Now, you use your iPhone for four years. Surely, there will be scratches here and there. You put it inside your bag. Sometimes your keys will scratch your phone or you drop your phone. There are scratches here and there. This is for sure. Um, so, you know, uh, therefore, wear and tear is one of the causes for depreciation. Therefore, the value of your phone drops. Number two is obsolescence. Now, this one is pretty hard to... Uh, Somehow it is pretty hard for students to memorize. Maybe this is not a word that you are, you commonly see, uh, and students don't understand what obsolescence means. Basically, obsolescence comes from the root word obsolete. And what does obsolete mean? Obsolete is um, another word for obsolete is old-fashioned. Now, because I always break down words for students, then. I realized that during, um, whether it's test or exam, students tend to use the two simpler words. When they are asked for two causes of depreciation, they will say, ah, obsolete, or they will say, even worse, they will say old-fashioned, okay? Uh, just to remind you, you are not supposed to use these two words, obsolete and old-fashioned. I just broke it down and used another term um, for obsolescence so that it's easier for you to understand and remember, but in exam, you should still be using this word from your textbook, obsolescence. So, yep, all right, two causes of depreciation. Number one, wear and tear. Number two, obsolescence. Okay, now we come to our third objective, objective three. The, the, to introduce to you the different methods to create depreciation, 
Uh, basically, there are three methods to calculate depreciation in your textbook. These are the three methods. Number one, uh, straight line method. The other one, number two, reducing balance method. And number three, revaluation method. For straight line method, there are two uh, formulas. The first formula is you take rate times cost. And what is rate? Rate basically is, uh, according to Meta, rate is your percentage. Okay? Question will give you a percentage, and this is rate. This is your formula number one. Then you have one more formula. That is original cost minus scrap value over expected useful life. Okay, um, this formula may look foreign to you now. This is the first time you are seeing this formula. You may not really understand or you have no confidence that you remember the formula. Don't worry yet. Later on, I will show you by example and you will understand um, this formula better and you will be able to remember the formula better. Okay, don't worry. Yet. All right. For straight line method, you have two formula, but reducing balance method, it's uh, simpler, uh, easier. You have only one formula, that is rate times net book value. And what is net book value? Net book value is original cost minus provision for depreciation. Okay, again, don't worry yet. I know this formulas look very foreign to you. The word net book value, provision for depreciation, or something you, are, you have never seen. Now, let me just explain a little bit. Oops, I'm sorry. I just went away. Uh, okay, let me just explain a little bit what is provision for depreciation. Provision for depreciation basically is a total, also called total depreciation. I'm just going to... Yeah, total depreciation or accumulated depreciation. Do you know what's the meaning of accumulated? Now, I thought accumulated is an English word. You should, and also you should have at this level, you should have learned it from, um, you know, your maths lesson. But apparently, when I teach in school, um, some students don't really understand what accumulated means, okay? Uh, so for the benefit of those who don't understand the word accumulated, uh, i give you an example. Accumulated, let's say your pocket money per day is $5. Yesterday, you didn't finish spending all your money. You have $2 left, correct? Yesterday, you saved $2. And then today, you get another $5 from your parents. Again, today, you didn't finish spending all $5. You um, saved another $2. You only spent 3 so you saved another 2 So your total accumulated savings will be $2 from yesterday and $2 from today. Your total accumulated savings will be 2 plus 2 equals to $4. You get it? Provision for depreciation is also an accumulation. That means you add up all your past year's um, depreciation. You get your provision for depreciation. Okay? Clear? Now, let me move on. Okay, like I said, I'm going to show you by example so that you can understand the formula better. Let us apply the first formula, straight line uh, formula, to example 1. Read the question. Question says that Semi Private Limited bought a furniture for $5,000 in the beginning of the year. The company's policy is to depreciate furniture at 20% per annum using the straight line method. Do you see? Question will tell you which method to use. Question already says straight line method. And question tell you, oh, you bought the furniture at $5,000. What does this mean? $5,000 will be your cost, isn't it? Your original cost, how much you bought it in the beginning. And then question also says that oh, depreciate at 20% per annum. Like I said earlier, rate is percentage. So this is your rate, isn't it? Correct? Yep. Okay, so you are supposed to calculate the annual depreciation of the furniture. Let us look at the formula again. Straight line method, there are two formula. Number one, rate times cost. Number two, original minus scrap value over expected useful life. So which one should I use? Are you given scrap value? No. Are you given expected useful life? No. Do you have original cost? 
Yes. So can you apply this formula in this case? You can't use this formula because you have two items missing. The only one that you can use in this case will be rate times cost. This one, you have rate, they gave you 20%, and you also have cost $5,000. Okay, so back to this question, how to calculate your annual depreciation. This is your formula. Annual depreciation equals to rate times cost. We decided right earlier, we used the first formula, rate times cost. So I just write out the formula first, rate times cost, and then rate equals to 20%. Cost equals to $5,000. Substitute it in. I do my calculation, take out my calculator, key it in, I get $1,000. So what does this $1,000 mean? It means that your annual depreciation or your depreciation expense per year is $1,000. That means, which means to say, uh, every year your furniture will, uh, the value of your furniture will drop. And every year it will drop by $1,000. This year drop 1,000, next year also drop 1,000, following year also drop 1,000. Every year, the furniture only get less and less valuable. And by how much? By $1,000. Okay? Clear? Right. Let me move on to the second example for straight line. Straight line example two. The question says that uh, Andy Fashion House bought a new sofa set for $10,000. The sofa is expected to have a useful life of 5 years, scrap value 2000 So you are supposed to calculate the annual depreciation of the furniture. Then you see, look at the formulas again, which one should you use? In this case, do you have original cost? Yes. Do you have scrap value? Yes. Do you have expected useful life? Yes. So, obviously, you should be using this formula. Okay? Right, back to the question. So we put the formula in, annual depreciation equals to original cost minus scrap value over expected useful life, which is equals to $10,000 original cost here. Do you see original cost, $10,000, useful life, 5 years. Scrap value, 2000 Yeah, scrap value, 2000 Okay, and you will get $1,600. Therefore, annual depreciation per year is $1,600. Clear? Mm. Move on. Last example, reducing balance method. Now, this one you got to pay attention. Eh? Uh, this one is slightly different from the one you did earlier. The straight line method was pretty simple. Basically, it's just application of the formula. Sub it in, you get your answer. This one is also you know, putting uh, sub your figures into the formula, but um, this one is a little bit more troublesome. Look at the question. The question says that Jimmy House Moving Service bought a new delivery truck for $50,000. The company's policy, which is the company's rule, um, they say that you have to charge uh, depreciation at uh, a rate of 20% per annum. Oh, take note. I have a mistake here, typo mistake. There is no dollar sign here. Okay, it's just 20%. 20% per annum using the reducing balance method. See, question tell you already, huh? you have to use reducing balance method. So again, you are supposed to calculate the annual depreciation. Look at the formula. This was the formula we, we, we gave you earlier. Reducing balance method. The formula is rate times net book value. And what is net book value? Net book value is original cost minus provision for depreciation. So, same thing, I'm going to put the formula into this page, easier for you to refer. And no depreciation equals to rate times net book value. And what is net book value? It's original cost minus provision for depreciation. So, you are supposed to question, did you see? Question tell you to calculate depreciation for 2000 and uh, 13 and 2014. Yep. So let me calculate 2013 first. Formula out already. Do you see? I gave you the formula already. So you are supposed to substitute the number in. Rate is 20%. Original cost is 50,000 given by the question. Do you see? Question got give you 50,000. This is your original cost. But do you realize that my provision for depreciation is zero? Why is it zero? 
Earlier on, I explained provision for depreciation to you. I say provision for depreciation is an accumulation. of all past depreciation. That means all the old depreciation add up together in the past. Um, you know, uh, if you have any depreciation, add them all up. This is your provision for depreciation. But in this case, because 2013 is the first year, this is the first year. I am calculating depreciation, which means to say there is no past depreciation. Last time got no depreciation, but this is the first time I'm calculating calculating depreciation. So therefore, provision for depreciation is zero. Okay, so my answer will be ten thousand. Right. Then we look at two thousand and fourteen. Same thing. Formula will stay the same. No change, but your numbers will change. Rate will not change. Rate is still at 20%. But original cost will also not change, right? But the thing is, your provision for depreciation, do you realize, is 10,000 now. It's no longer zero. Why? Because, again, provision for depreciation is an accumulation of all past depreciation. This is your 2014, uh, is your year 2 already. Which means to say, is there a previous year? Yes, there is a year one, right? So do you have a previous year depreciation? Yes. Previously, I calculated to be 10,000. I have an old depreciation. I have a past depreciation. Of how much? Of your answer here, 10,000. Therefore, this answer is 10,000. Okay? And then you key into your calculator, you will get $8,000. So for your year one depreciation is 10000 Year two depreciation is 8000 Okay? Take note, we do, uh, straight line method is simpler. You don't need to calculate depreciation year by year. Every year is the same. If you calculate your first year depreciation is 1000 second year will also be 1000 third year also 1000 fourth year also 1000 No need to recalculate. It's much easier for you. Why I say reducing is more troublesome because do you realize year 1, 2013, your depreciation is 10,000. Year 2, 2014, your depreciation is 8,000. For street line, every year reducing, uh, for reducing balance method, depreciation every year is different. Do you see? Different. 10,000, 8,000. Okay? The reason why this name, reducing balance method, is because every year, the reducing balance method, every year the depreciation will become lower and lower and lower. First year 10,000, second year 8,000, third year maybe 6,000 or maybe 4,000. The number just becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. Therefore, it is called reducing balance method. Okay, This method is more popular in exam because by giving you this question for exam, we make you mm, your life more difficult. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so master both straight line and reducing balance method, yeah? But reducing balance method, honestly, this is more uh, popular um, to come out in exam because this one requires students to do, uh, this one is more difficult, straight line is too simple for us to test you during a uh, major exam, okay? Uh, but when I say that, it doesn't mean that straight line will not come out for exam. Uh, straight line will also come out for exam. It's just that uh, teachers apparently looking at all the past year papers from different schools, straight, uh, reducing balance method is more uh, popular. Okay. So with that, I come to the, I've come to the end of uh, part one of depreciation.